Irate Gamer is now on Patreon. Get early access to all things Irate Gamer weeks before they're released on YouTube. So click on the link in the description for exclusive content only on Patreon. Something smells right for reviewing. Well, look at what we have here. Ah, I should have known. Well, let's get this party started. Wolverine for the NES. When it comes to adapting comic book properties onto the NES, Wolverine was a prime choice at the time. He had become wildly popular throughout the 80s to the point of getting his own spin-off comic series in 1988. Then three years later, the Wolverine video game was released. But is it worth its weight in adamantium? Let's find out. Comic book adaptions on the NES are always tricky, and Wolverine is no exception. On a positive note, I do love all the vibrant colors found in this game, because it turns out to be a true homage to the 1980s comic book style of coloring. The one downside, though, is this weird enemy selection. So why the hell do all the bad guys look like the X-Men Iceman? Don't you think that this might be a little bit confusing for fans of the comic book? Huh? Talk about a major oversight. So you mean to tell me the entire time LJN was working on this game, it didn't occur to anyone there that these guys kind of look like a fellow teammate of Wolverine's? Hey Wolverine, what are you playing? What the enemy? Ah! What no? Ah, it's a close one. How did no one catch this? You'd think someone, anyone, would have been like, hey, this kind of looks like Iceman, let's change it. And it's not like it would have been an impossible task either because there are also regular humans running around this level that they could have altered these guys into. So really, what the hell's the story here, LJN? Boy, you guys really dropped the ball on this one. Now the gameplay in this game is pretty straightforward. A to jump and B to punch. But this damn jump mechanic could have really used some help because it took a while for me to recalibrate my button mashing prowess in order to properly jump between all these teeny platforms without dying. Ah. Ah. Even later in the game, every jump I make is a complete crapshoot because I have no idea which way this sucker is going to go. And unfortunately, it's usually at my expense. I learned to jump, asshole! Well, I guess you can always use Wolverine's deadly adamantium claws, right? Yeah, about that. Pressing the select button does unleash your claws, and you can destroy your enemy within one punch. But well, you better kill these guys with faster reflexes and fucking Quicksilver. Because this game only gives you a few seconds to pop out your claws and use them before the timer runs out. And now they're gone? What the hell, man? So you put my mutant powers on a ticking time clock? Who's the hell idea was this? You need to die! Oh, and I clocked this one out too, because check this out. Once hitting that select button, well, you have eight seconds to do your thing. Eight seconds? I take a dump in a waffle iron to make shit waffles with your eight seconds. If I'm playing as Wolverine, I want to slice things up with my claws, damn it! And besides that, you know what else is lame? The game's character cameos. You'd think a game based on an X-Men character would also deliver some top-tier X-Men showing up as well, right? Well, if you want to see the likes of Cyclops, Storm, or Colossus, get ready for this lineup. Havoc, Psylocke, and Jubilee? Oh, good God, could they have picked a worse roster of X-Men? And Jubilee? Oh, come on. She's nothing more than a Jason Todd ripoff from the 1980s. Crazy hairstyle, red and yellow colors, 1980s teen attitude. <laughs> it couldn't be more obvious. But once these other X-Men show up in the game, it's done all wrong. Because when you meet Psylocke in level two, she gives you a device that summons Havoc? Wait, what? Why isn't Havoc giving me this device himself? Oh, for God's sake. 
And as for Psylocke, this is her only role in the game, to give me this device. What the hell? Screw that! What Psylocke needs to be doing is offering me her mutant powers of switching bodies. Or however the hell she did it in the comics, I can't remember. God, that would have been a cool-ass feature in this game. Being able to switch Wolverine out to play as someone else? Ugh, LJN dropping the ball yet again. And if you're curious what Jubilee gives you, eh, nothing but a damn headache. Now I can make my way up to level 4 without any major problems. Everything goes smoothly until reaching that dreaded water stage. Oh god, I hate this level so much. Because I swear it has to be on par with the water level found in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles NES game. But instead of all that seaweed bullshit, this game gives you turbines. Turbines of every shape, turbines of every size, affecting all the water currents so you swim into them, which are all there to take you down. Turbines, 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 turbines. Even missile turbines. Boom, fuck, you're dead. Every corner I turn, it's 50 turbines up my ass. Turn this corner, turbine. Swim this way, turbine, 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 turbine. It's like a game developer said, hey, that screen doesn't have an enemy on it, so throw a turbine in there. Oh, I better grab this hamburger for health. Oh, there's a turbine under it? Oh, fuck you. And when you aren't seeing turbines, you'll be contending with these bubble maker bullshits. Oh man, a bubble can kill me? So let me get this straight. Wolverine's body is made up of the world's strongest metal known to man, and yet a bubble can take his ass down. Please explain this one to me and do it slowly because I'm too busy raging to even understand it. Ah! No! Oh. Enough of this! You know, it would have been nice to use my claw powers on this section. Oh, but I already wasted my eight seconds of mutant powers a second ago on the last obstacle. Ah, I can't take it anymore! And the worst part is that when Wolverine is in the water, he can't attack anything. You just sit there and have to take it. Oh, but wait, it gets better because in addition to all the turbines, missile turbines, bubbles, and eight seconds of mutant powers, you also have to watch your air meter because if you don't have enough oxygen, you'll die! Oh, what a shit-tacular! Oh, when you come to this area, God forbid you fall here because, oh God, no! Now you have to loop around this entire level again just to get back to where you were. Who the hell made this game? I need to strangle him now! Uh, I can't take it! Ah! Thank God each level has about 50 checkpoints where you can pick up after dying. Because if I had to restart this level all over again every time I died, I'd flip my shit into outer space until it reaches the Mkron crystal. Yep, that's right, I went there. How you X-Men fans like that reference? From here on out, the game gets ridiculously hard. Because even your adamantium claws aren't enough to save you since they hardly do any damage to these guys. Ah, what a franken fuck. Once entering the crypt area in level 5, I'm really confused as to why all these crypts have Logan's name on them. What the hell is this all about? Are all these coffins supposed to be all the lives I lost previously in this game up to this point? Because if that's the case, well you better start stacking this shit up a mile high, because I lost a lot of lives up to this point. At the end of each level, you'll be treated with some taunting from Wolverine's biggest comic book antagonist at the time, Sabretooth. But before actually facing him, you'll have to go through Magneto first, which is just ridiculous since Magneto can control metal, which also includes the metal in Wolverine's body, so in reality this will be no contest. But of course performing this punch once and retreat attack will somehow save the day. After one last powwow with your D-list roster of X-Men, well we get some dialogue that's pretty weak here. Ugh, what I really want to say to these guys is, where the hell were you when I was losing 50 lives during that whole water level fiasco? Thanks for leaving me high and dry, fellas. Now it's on to the final battle with Sabretooth. And if you've ever gotten this far in the game and tried to just beat him down, well, sadly, you probably lost. Because in order to win, you need to keep punching him repeatedly until he falls off the cliff to the right. Wow, that's quite the Easter egg, because if I was a kid back in the day that got this far only to die because I didn't know how to kill him, I would've been pissed. But even if you do end up winning, the only victory you get is a picture of Wolverine questioning on if this is truly the end. 
Oh, damn, that's it? Are they trying to set up a sequel of another game here or what? Because this is yet again another ball dropping moment. When I first started the game, the first couple of levels were pretty cool and fun to play. But the further you get in this game, the more it falls apart, especially with that ending. The end? Oh, it's definitely the end of something. It's gonna be you, bub. Ah! <sighs>